Hello, I'm your host, Grayson Brulte, and welcome to another episode of SAE Tomorrow Today, a show about emerging technology and trends in mobility with the leaders, innovators, and strategists who make it all happen. On today's episode, we're absolutely honored to be joined by Nicholas Oren from ANSYS and Renee Grossspeech from BMW Group. On today's episode, they'll discuss their partnership to develop the first ever end-to-end tool chain specifically guided by safety. We hope you enjoy this episode. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Nice to be here. Oh, nice to be here. We're excited to have you here because what Ansys and BMW Group are doing, you're developing the future and you're develop- developing it through collaboration. Nicholas, how long has Ansys and BMW Group been collaborating together? So we started collaboration early part of uh, 2019, and that collaboration actually increased uh, uh, starting in 2021 when, when the tool chain became uh, utilized for the uh, official product at BMW. Renee, the partnership and the collaboration started in 2019. You accelerated it in 2021 with the first ever end-to-end tool chain specifically guided by safety principles to develop and validate ADAS and the driving functions. Was that developed because of the trust that you had with ANSYS from that relationship? I mean, you, you, we believe, strongly believe in collaborations. I mean, it always needs a lot of work, like in every relationship between two parties. Um, but we deeply believe in uh, the synergies and the mutual benefits to benefit from, from competences and from expertises from, from both parties. And uh, at that time, we had different options in the market uh, to work with. Uh, and ANSYS was actually the partner who who had strong domain expertise in the area of simulation. And it was also open and flexible to work with us uh, on a completely new solution, which simply did not exist at that time. We, we had very good exp- um, experiences with ANSYS and decided to continue the collaboration. Nicholas, Renee pointed out the domain experience. How did ANSYS originally develop that domain experience? Well, ANSYS is, uh, I mean, is focused on simulation uh, solutions, obviously, but also into the autonomy space, uh, we have uh, we have capabilities in safety uh, modeling and uh, and analysis. We have capabilities in software developments and capabilities in sensor uh, simulation. So this all together brings a lot of knowledge that could be obviously of great use here. It, to me, it sounds that ANSYS is taking a holistic approach to it. You're not looking at one segment, you're looking at multiple segments that will have an impact there. Nicholas, how would you describe what the end-to-end tool chain is and the function that the tool provides as it relates to ADAS and autonomous driving functions? Yeah, I mean, the, the tool chain here, I mean, there are multiple work streams that needs to be executed in order to provide data results for the safety case uh, in the case of L380 stacks. And here the tool chain is taking care of the simulation and re-simulation part. And so it ensures that it covers the space as defined by the operating design domain and the confidence of the results. So that's what what the tool chain does. And for this, it has several capabilities as managing the scenarios that can come from expertise or from sort of analysis. It analyzes the drive data, okay, to provide the parameters, variations and ranges of those parameters for the given scenarios we're looking for. The ability to vary scenario and simulate in the closed loop with a test plan. And finally, uh, extract the results, compute for confidence towards the, the safety case. Renee, what Nicholas describes, it's increased safety. Is that a fair assumption? Yes, of course. I mean, the two chains that we are working on are supposed to deliver a higher safety. For BMW Group, it's it's very important to deliver a product to the customer um, that is safe before it enters the road and not together with the customer. Yeah, and uh, and as I said, I mean, this this requires according uh, according tools. And what Nicholas was also raising is uh, is 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 a dimension of safety, which you call SOTIF. You might know the difference between FUSA, functional safety, and SOTIF. FUSA, tailored and and intended to test the, the or to make sure that the system does what is uh, what it's supposed to do. Yeah? For instance, to execute a braking uh, decision, uh, braking maneuver. But when it comes to SOTIF, we more talk about um, performance insufficiencies, yeah, which is more a statistical problem, uh, where you have to, to run different and uh, multiple tests in different scenarios uh, to test and to check whether whether the system behaves in the way, in the end, yeah, better than a human driver. And this is, this is a, um, and when it comes to automated driving, a very, very important uh, topic that we're looking at. It's a very important topic, 
BMW's been known for years as the ultimate driving machine. There's a, there's a very big brand there that, that means a lot, and safety plays a very critical role in the BMW brand. Renee, what are the safety principles that the organiza- organizations are following to enable this? Well, generally, uh, safe, safety comes first uh, for BMW. Yeah. So, as I said, um, we, we, we do extensive testing um, to make sure the customer gets a product in its hand that is, that is safe uh, from, from a system perspective, but also that we take it very seriously and uh, look at it in a responsible way, how the customer works with the product. Yeah, so we we know we know it from from uh, from test drives um, that customers pretty well adopt to automated driving. We have seen we have seen people sitting in the car being being concerned in the first moments, and then after a few minutes, yeah. They, they they just look start looking around then they pick their phone and check their emails yeah and so forth so it's not about not about caring the, of the acceptance it's more about handling the fact that the customer will accept the system yeah in in a responsible way this is how we look at that it comes down to trust when a customer buys the BMW vehicle with a level 3 system there they trust that the system will work they trust this will work safely, and that'll be a great all-around BMW experience. Nicholas, is that where the ANSYS software comes in, where you validate these safety principles? So when a consumer goes to purchase a BMW vehicle with an L3, they get in that vehicle, the BMW group knows that this will safely operate the way it's intended to operate? Yes, exactly. And uh, so so our role is really to provide these results from the simulation or resimulation work streams and, and provide this level of confidence in comparison to the test, uh, to the to the results from the drive data. Uh, so that's really our, our, our role here. Here, the principles for safe vehicle, L3 safe vehicle, is really the positive risk balance. This is something you probably have uh, read from uh, literature and technical papers. So it's being safer than a human driver, okay? And that and that really is what, what we want to validate. So again, the simulation and re-simulation, as I said initially, are not the only work streams. In addition, you also have hardware in the loop, ground testing that that plays a role into making the complete uh, uh, argumentation for safety here. What ANSYS does is that uh, capability of doing this uh, simulation and re-simulation with the tool chain and certifies this as ISO 26262 uh, uh, tool chain. That's, that's to certify that we are compliant with what we say the product does and how it does it for the use cases that we address. The responsibility of the safety argument, the safety claim, is obviously on on the OEM, and that will depend obviously on the ODD regulatory bodies and liability insurances. Obviously, this is not something ANSYS is uh, taking part of. You mentioned the word Nicholas re-simulation. That's a term we haven't heard on the podcast. Our listener says we know what simulation is, but what's re-simulation? How would you describe it to a podcast listener? So maybe I should say a replay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. We we have the ability to take recordings from the drive data and play this recording as input data into the simulation tool chain. So that is re-simulation. Simulation. Is that it's the key that's enabling the system to operate safely because you're able to run different scenarios. You're getting the driving data to enhance it. Is that a fair statement, Nicholas? Yes, yeah, simulation is 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 a is a critical part of of all this. I mean, uh, depending on the ODD, the operating design domain, whatever the ODD, in fact, uh, the number of kilometers you have to run, whether truly physically or on simulation is enormous okay it goes over a billion so you can do not do it driving vehicles uh, uh, simply so you need to do simulation so you're getting inputs from the the the, the real vehicle uh, data to ensure that your simulations are, are appropriate okay but but the key element is really the, the ability to run simulation to achieve them in a very efficient way because even simulation could take too long to cover all of these kilometers to cover so efficient simulation means fast so you have to have the right level of description you cannot be too detailed everywhere so you have to have the right level again and be intelligent in a sense that you don't cover the entire space uh, you know in a very elementary way you have to be clever in the way you cover the space with the defined kpis key performance indicators that 
comes back to you as a result and you will concentrate the amount of simulation where it's most needed okay so that's you have to bear in mind that we're talking about a number of kilometers to be run in order to validate but but the software stack has updates and so every update needs to be validated. So it's not a single one-off uh, validation. It's a tool chain that is used and used on and on again. Rene, is it the efficiency of ANSYS simulation tools that creates the advantage for BMW as you get prepared to roll out the level three system? ANSYS is uh, providing a major part of, of um, our, our components um, in the entire ecosystem. And Mikola was, was already addressing that there are different components from real test drive to simulation, re-simulation, hardware in the loop and so forth. So it's a, it's a big ecosystem around testing that BMW is running and, and ANSYS delivers uh, key components to, to this ecosystem. Yeah, that's definitely um, with a capable team that that was um, was well interacting with our developers to really integrate it in, 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 in into this overall approach. Yeah, there's clear that there's trust here between Antis and, and the BMW group, which is really important. That's going to allow BMW to create great products that your consumers are going to want to purchase, and most importantly, they're going to want to enjoy. They're going to want to enjoy the BMW experience because what you're creating there w with Antis, Renee. BMW made the decision to offer an SAE Level Three product to consumers. Why? <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's that's the first question I on all presentations. <laughs> <laughs> Why BMW? Yeah, automated driving. Uh, I mean, yes. I mean, in the first glance, it might conflict uh, to 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 have this ultimate driving machine in mind <clears throat> with automated driving. You let it go. Yeah. So, but in the end, it well complements uh, because in 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 some markets and in many situations that we see customers not having really fun in their cars. Yeah, because they're stuck in traffic jams um, and and they just simply waste their time in that. Yeah. So we are interested in in relieving our customers and bring fun also to these moments, yeah, because the car does the job for them. Then having having heads free and 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 and, and looking forward to the to the to the freeway, uh, open space again, and and having fun again. So, so this is this is this is why I think automated driving perfectly fits to to the idea of a, of an automated driving machine ultimate driving and let drive machine. As a former owner of the ultimate drive machine, I had a 525i and I would take it from Connecticut down to New York City on the West Side Highway <laughs> sitting <that> in, <laughs> we're getting there, maybe I'll get a 750IL. We're sitting there in traffic and how great would it be to have a level three system so I can have fun driving down then when I hit the West Side Highway sitting in traffic, I could turn on your level three system. I'm not stressed out by the time I get to the restaurant, the location I'm going to in New York City. And so to me, it really complements what BMW stands for. You're, you're having the ability to drive, and then when you get stuck in that gridlock, you're having the ability to turn on a level three system. Is that one of the ways that BMW is approaching the development of the SAE level three system, saying, okay, we have really great driving experiences here that BMW is world renowned for, and then you have these situations where bumper to bumper to bumper, and you're frustrated. Exactly, exactly. Complemented by by adding technology, infotainment technology. I mean, BMW is looking into many many areas um, to to give fun even even in those situations. Definitely, yeah. Nicholas, we take that scenario. I'm I'm on the West Side Highway in a BMW Level Three system in bumper to bumper traffic. Perhaps there's an individual in California stuck on the 101 in in bumper to bumper traffic, or somewhere in Florida on I-75 stuck in bumper to bumper. Are you taking all of that data and putting it into the simulation to enhance the system as more and more consumers drive more and more miles in these BMW systems? So indeed, in your in your BMW, you probably had the choice. Uh, I mean, BMW owners of 35 and 7 had the choice to provide data, and that data is utilized uh, for, for developing vehicle, and that's a great tool. Um, but in general, there is more and more data that comes uh, to OEMs and tier ones to, uh, to develop systems. Uh, and it will it will obviously make a great change on the way we develop these systems. It, it's a question of maturation of processes and standards because at the end, of what what we say usually is when we have a 
a critical technical challenge, there are two ways of solving it. Either you find that theory that all of a sudden uh, answers the, the technical challenge, or you have a process to, to deal with it. And uh, so here what we see is that this data will actually impact greatly the way we, we sort this, because with multiple data, we can imagine that we will have standard scenarios, uh, which will be linked to standard operating design domain. And with those standards, and they're only possible if the community is really collaborating together. With all of these standards, we, we can move faster. We can actually uh, uh, create systems uh, in the same foundations. And so the, the foundations for those already exist into the ASAM uh, community. And uh, you have the, uh, the open simulation interfaces. You have the open CRG, open drive, label, ODD, and, and open scenario. So the foundations exist. And you have companies collaborating together, and BMW in one, is one of those. And you said that there is a great collaboration between ANSYS and, and, and BMW, and BMW Spirit allows for this. It allows for this not only with ANSYS, uh, with multiple players. And that's great to see this for the community. Standards make the world go round. The future mobility will be built around collaborations. You thrive in simulation. BMW thrives in making some of the world's best vehicles. It's those collaborations that's going to enable this to happen. Nicholas, we, we talked about the scenario of me being stuck in, tra in, in traffic using the system. But as autonomy gets better and better, how do you see consumers adopting technology? Is it perhaps we get to level four system where, okay, they want to go to grandma's house or they, or they want to go to dinner. How do you see consumers using the technology as autonomy gets better and better? It's probably the same way as, you know, any IN tech, high tech uh, uh, product, you know, adopted by the mainstream consumers. Okay. And, and uh, I can refer to the, to, to the, the book of Crossing the Chasm from Jeffrey Moore here. And we all know about this. Okay. So I think the image still applies here. That's, that's the same case. And you, you have the early adopters today. People are, some people are visionary and adopting these and want to be the first one to adopt those. Then you're going to have the early majority before getting to the late majority and between the uh, the early and the, the the early adopters and early majority you have the the chasm that needs to be crossed and so you mentioned the case of this traffic jam and this is a convenience it's it's very it's great to have this capability to do something else than just driving bumper to bumper the other aspect i think will make that will make these functions adopted is also all of the advanced uh, level 2 uh, uh, systems that are to do with safety, with comfort and safety, those will actually show people in their usage how benefit, you know, how they can benefit from it. And that's another air axis where people will further and further adopt uh, these these technologies. It starts to build trust. Renee, how do you see consumers adopting autonomy as the technologies get better? Yeah, I think uh, amending to, to what Nicola is saying, I mean, I mean, I told you the story about uh, people sitting in, in an automated uh, test car. Yeah, So as I said, it's, I, I don't worry too much about acceptance, but um, uh, but in real world, um, we, we see level two functions getting better and better. Yeah. So, um, and I, I see a smooth transition from level two to level three from a customer perspective that uh, they are in charge or still in charge in, uh, in responsible um, in responsibility for driving at level level two level, yeah, but perceiving the um, the performance of the of the system. Yeah. Sometimes maybe also finding out the, the limitations, yeah, which sometimes we do um, by intention, yeah, not to to make the customer too confident. Yeah, um, because that's dangerous. Yeah, so we observe um, uh, where where people look. Uh, are they are they attentive? Yeah, can they do their observation job? Yes or no? Yeah, if not, the switch the system will switch off. Yeah, I mean if you unbuckle, it will switch off. So those kind of things. Yeah, to and this is what I mean with handling handling customer interaction in a responsible way yeah so we we have to take care of the customer uh, and trend and 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 accompany the the transition from level two to level three uh, and at at some point where we can say now now these situations we are so confident with our with the safety of our odd we will take over responsibility now yeah and give it really the, take the driving tasks and let that the customer go uh, and i i think it's more or a kind of uh, a transition, which with the customer maybe not really is perceived in that way. Yeah. So, 
I'm pretty sure that this transition process is not a big deal. Yeah. So that my personal opinion, looking at uh, at the technical implementations, it's more on the OEM side. Yeah. To to decide on this point in time, we say now we take responsibility. Yeah. So so that will be that will be the critical point. Yeah. BMW takes safety very serious. I want to highlight something you said there. The seatbelt. If the seat, if the, if the the driver or the passenger under the system turns off. Yes. If you lift your butt, if you unbuckle, it will it will identify this. You think about from a safety perspective, we've all seen YouTube videos that are, I'll use the word, highly inappropriate driving behavior. And BMW sitting there and saying, okay, we're going to take a leadership. We're not going to allow you to unbuck your seatbelt and go in the back because you think you're a YouTube star. We're going to take safety seriously. Are you BMW doing anything around driver monitoring where you're monitoring the driver if they're attentive or not? Yeah, yeah, we, we do, we do. Yeah, we already do. So it, it is is not about, I mean, identifying the, the driver personally. So it's it's everything is is abstracted. Yeah, uh, it's just about identifying perception, attentiveness. Yeah, that it is what it's all about. Yeah, definitely something that BMW looks at. And and is our we we consider it as our responsibility to take care of the driver at that point. I'll sum it up this way: when I BMW cares about safety, this to me the seatbelt it should be a uh, Nicholas talked about standards, but the seatbelt if you're going to be in a highly automated vehicle, the seatbelt sensor should be standard across the board because it will save lives and it will stop idiotic behavior that can not only endanger yourselves but other individuals on the road. Nicholas. By 2030, 45% of vehicles are projected to be highly automated. From a technical standpoint, what has to happen to enable these vehicles to operate safely in all conditions? BMW is doing it right with the seatbelt sensor. I love that, Renee. But what else has to be done to ensure the, the safe operations of these vehicles? Yeah, I mean, it's a great, great challenge. It's a very uh, difficult challenge uh, because operating in all conditions and, and referring to the number of kilometers that needs to be driven or or run, okay, in order to validate. If, if you want to validate uh, today, you still have at the later part of the process, the, the, real, the real test that you need to do. If you want to do this uh, in all conditions, that means you need to, to do this test upfront in the virtual world as well. And today, so when you talk about all conditions, you also have extreme conditions as weather, particular lighting, severe environment. Uh, that, that's a lot of, of uh, testing uh, or even simulation. Today, there is no product that can actually simulate this in a very cost-effective and time-effective way. Uh, you can simulate this phenomenon, but they are time-consuming and you remember the number of kilometers you need to run. You, you, you can't really afford this or, if you, or, or, or the cost associated to this would be too high. So this is really what needs to happen is to advance the way we are actually able to model those phenomenon. So we need to have the proper simulation model. And that's a, a, a term when you when, a term when you uh, when you um, do physics based simulation, you, you always talk about the proper model. Okay, the, the one that is important for the purpose that you uh, th that you're looking to address. Okay, you need to have the ability to automate the environment modeling because modeling the environment is very costly too. It has to be at the level of your representation of your perception. Uh, of your system, uh, and you need to run way faster than you can today, <laughs> way faster than real time. Uh, it's not just adding GPUs uh, to today, GPU as a cost, and, and, and you need to be able to do this. That's already on the simulation part, a lot of challenges. And then there is on the risk analysis. I believe there is also uh, uh, a challenge here to, to formalize the way we do risk analysis. Uh, and we, we do this uh, critical, you know, this is a, a critical area of, of maturation that we need to, to advance. This is what ANSYS is, is, is working on. Uh, so, um, yeah, 2030, it's a, it's a great challenge. It's a great challenge, but it's a challenge we'll get there. The industry... We'll get there. Simulation will play a critical role in the future of autonomy. It will allow companies such as to, to model different scenarios that will help make the road safer and the technology safer. So when consumers of BMWs operate these systems, they can ensure that the BMW brand means safety. Renee, from a design perspective, how is BMW preparing for a highly automated future? 
The first thing that we did in the past was um, we reorganized our, our software um, and, and the whole ADOS development. A couple of years ago, we merged all the uh, the, the organization units. Um, we, we, we reinvented the process of designing professional automotive software, yeah, which is, I would say, really state of the art uh, in, in the industry, uh, if not leading, um, with a big software team uh, building safe software. I mean, it's 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 a very different idea yeah if if you build any application or if it's supposed to be a, a, a safe application uh, where you need very broad domain expertise yeah in um, uh, in, 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 in logical components uh, perception uh, decision making hardware implementation and, and all of these kind of things yeah so this is now I would say like like a really good organization uh, that has been evolved and um, and and still, I mean, I have to mention it again, but there's still the safety claim is embedded in in the genes. You know, I mean, it, it's always there. Yeah, it, it, everybody feels responsible for for every mile that's being driven on the road. Yeah, so in in a safe way. Yeah, so so this is this this is embedded in 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 the whole organization. So that that makes you confident that it's that we well prepared for the future. But at the same time, I would say we have been very optimistic in the past. Yeah, that we can beat the challenge in the next years, and we learned it's far harder. Then we already we already thought it is, yeah. But I mean, we made the same experience as I think many many other organizations in the world now are doing, yeah, or did it in the in the in the in the younger past. So we believe um, in in automation up to level four, um, SAE level four, is still a very hard challenge, yeah. In the next in the upcoming years. I do not believe in a BMW without the steering wheel before my retirement. Uh, so uh, I, I think I think it, it it's 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 still a long way, yeah, uh, to make that uh, really happen in in a, in a safe way. And and how do we get there? Uh, and we talked about data. Yeah, it it is a continuous process. So it, there will not be level level four level. I do not talk about level five, but level three or level four from one day to the other. You know, I mean, it's a million of scenarios yeah, out there. It's 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 ODD from you just drive bumper to bumper up to you drive on a uh, on a road without separated lanes yeah um with with opposite traffic uh, oncoming traffic and a delta speed of 200 yeah so it's a huge odd bandwidth so and and we will see a a, a smooth transition from a small odd to a big, big odd over the next 10th years I would say, yeah, and we will get there step by step, making, um, I mean, preparing a sad simulation is a, is a huge and important part um, to to understand how the system reacts in certain situations, by the way, that you cannot even test on the real road, and hopefully yeah. you don't, yeah, uh, because we only look at the critical things, yeah, you know, we, we this is 90% of the job, look at the critical things, you, you don't want to test critical things in real world traffic, so, this is this is this will be part of it, and we learn step by step on each scenarios. Yeah, so so this will be this will be a process, and 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 I'm happy to say like that BMW has has is pretty much advanced in in taking the data. Customers happy to share that. Yeah, I mean we don't talk; it's all anonymized. Yeah, we don't. We we don't care about if it's Mike, Sean, or Lisa who is driving. Yeah, we only are interested in the situations that are being perceived. Yeah, and how they evolved. Yeah, and and then simulate and look how our system is would would react in such a situation. Yeah, so so this is what we're doing step by step with improving quality and richness of the data coming from a huge fleet of cars out there. The data will make. Your product better, SAE Level 4, while it may be a hard challenge, it's a worthy challenge. And Nicholas, what as we, what role will ANSYS play as we move towards, or we, if you want to use the term, drive towards SAE Level 4? What role will ANSYS play? Well, to me, we, we, we'll, we'll still be standing with our customers and serving, the, serving our, our, our customers. Uh, so 
I think the same principle applies, but but they need to be enriched. Uh, they need to be matured, as Rene was saying. It's it's a lot to learn into all this. I was mentioning the level of details of representations of the environment, the sensor, etc. Uh, there is also m- more technologies to come to to bring in, like the communication. How all the communications, you know, vehicle to anything, V two X or vehicle to vehicle, will play into this. This will put another level of complexity into scenarios. Uh, as again, Rene was mentioning, the number of scenarios will explode. And so the same will apply with, so that means the same principle, meaning that uh, more and more simulation that needs to be efficient. And also maybe I didn't mention, but the efficiency of finding the cases that are relevant. It's not only an expert knowledge, it is an expert knowledge, but 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 you need the tool to help expert in identifying these cases, the cases you don't want to test, <laughs> those, those, you, you need to be able to identify them through simulation, explore them at the level of uh, depth that is really required to, to, to see how that system, your system of the test is behaving for this test. So, yeah, again, it, it's a lot of challenge ahead of us and, and ANSYS will continue improving our capabilities and we have the right DNA with simulation to do this. And you're, you're getting the data from BMW that will allow you to improve your simulation models. Renee, as we, we think about the future of autonomy, we get to SCE level four, do we ultimately end up with bespoke offerings depending on the application use case perhaps? It's a different type of vehicle taking kids to school or a different vehicle commuting into the city for work. Do we end up with different use cases as we eventually crack level four? Uh, maybe, yeah, I, I could imagine this. I mean, we look, I mean, we see it already. I mean, different different parties uh, or or, um, or companies um, approaching the market with with those with those kind of applications. We'll see, yeah, what what is the right approach? I mean, if you immediately start from from zero more or less to level four and let the car go, yeah, in 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 complex situations at low speed, or if you approach it. Um, from level two over level three and then to level four with uh, with more controlled environments yeah um but maybe with at the higher speeds um so we as you know bmw believes in 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 and the offer coming from the level three yeah in in more controlled uh, situations yeah with with less risks no vulnerable road users separate lanes, uh, maybe lower speeds, starting with lower speeds, um, you know, as Daimler does also, yeah, uh, and gaining experience and, uh, and, and, and do a safe step by step. As we get to autonomy, I have to ask here, I really loved, I believe it was the 80s when BMW did the painted cars, you had the Andy Warhol car. As you eventually roll out an SAE level four BMW, I love to see BMW bring back the painted cars with you did such a fantastic job with them. I keep that in mind. <laughs> Nicholas, what are your what are your thoughts on the bespoke offerings? Do we eventually get there? Obviously, the automotive market is is a is a tremendous market for Ansys, and Ansys will provide solution for uh, for for the automotive market, and, and will evolve function of the level of of you know the ODD or the level of uh, of autonomy that needs to be reached. I don't believe we will have a dedicated solution per level or et cetera. What we will do will actually provide the core simulation capabilities uh, that really enable our customer to 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 have this diversity because we don't believe that OEMs are addressing the same challenge the same way. So we need to have that level of flexibility. That also means that they need to have the customization abilities through APIs. All of our product needs to have APIs and have APIs so they can be connected to other products within ANSYS or externally to, to ANSYS. So that's that's a lot to, to be done uh, on our side. You have to bear in mind that for us, autonomy is not only automotive, uh, it's other markets, it's other areas like aerospace, off highway, agricultural and robotics. Uh, there's a lot ongoing there as well. And the requirements are very different. The types of sensors are very different. The, so the use cases are much different. And we need to, and we do uh, address these as well as a simulation as a simulation company, as a simulation uh, 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 software provider. Uh, we stay open, obviously, through this approach of, of core simulation capabilities and APIs for customization of solutions. 
It's truly amazing how much the mobility industry can learn from the aerospace industry, from managing fleets, managing operations, safety best practices. That, that that's to me is the is the best way to describe it. There's so much learnings that we can continue to learn from the aerospace industry. Nicholas, in your opinion, what is the future of mobility? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> of course, we all ask ourselves that question. Uh, the future of mobility, I mean, first, ANSYS will serve its customers and will serve its customer the way it has always done, the 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 the, the best as best as possible always. Um, I personally uh, believe that the future of mobility is with energy efficient and safety uh, ways of of uh, of being transported uh, from point A to point B. I guess that you know the energy efficient and and system sustainability uh, of our environment requires to to have less pollutant emissions. Uh, uh, so so indeed, uh, I believe that uh, a clever way of uh, of um, you know, being mobile in, in the world is is critical for humanity. Is it in the very long term? Probably. In the meantime, there is a lot to learn. I mean, uh, we we have a lot of uh, a, a lot to develop, and that technology again doesn't only is not only utilized for mobility. Uh, as I was saying, for agriculture, uh, it can be used. So it's for productivity. It's for safety in many other domains. So this will be great for the industry in in as a whole. Uh, and and what we see is that those those products are becoming really high end products. Uh, the the value there is in such a vehicle is is tremendous. It's amazing. Uh, if you if you look you know ten years back or twenty years back, you would not imagine this would have happened. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean, but in the meantime, yes, we will have to be more clever as humans <laughs> because we <laughs> we love our hearse. <laughs> we do love our hearse, Renee. What's your opinion on the future mobility? This is my personal opinion, yeah. So I'm not speaking with the BMW voice now, but but maybe it complements. I I love I love the sharing idea. I I think there's there's big value in 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 public transportation, but to be honest, um, knowing how humans are, yeah. I mean, if you want to go into the park. You don't wait for another 20 person until they also want to go to the park, you know? I mean, you you just walk there, yeah? And and I think we will for long, long, long time see individual traffic and individual mobility. But it will evolve over time. It has to, yeah? I mean, I don't think that we drive with a 2.5 ton vehicle in 20 years time or 30 years time, yeah? Uh, just sitting alone in it, yeah? So... I deeply hope, uh, and this is my motivation also for for, for working on an, in automated driving, is to to build a solution yeah, that allows us to to build individual mobility, which is smarter, which is lightweight, yeah, which does not cause any accidents. Uh, so you don't need to build all the steel around you. Yeah, uh, it it maybe also drives automat autonomously or automatically. Um, you don't need to care about it, and it brings you just from A to B. What is the main purpose of mobility? You know. Yeah. So and uh, and and I I strongly believe that technology will lead us there to 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 bring sustainable mobility, individual mobility into the world that we that we can all justify also in terms of um, of sustainability. Mobility is evolving and will continue to evolve, and it's I believe it's going to be driven by consumers. And gentlemen, this has been a really fascinating conversation where you shed a lot of light on the ANSYS BMW Group Partnership. And as we look to wrap up this insightful conversation, what would you like our listeners to take away with them? And Renee, we'll start with you, please. I can tell you the, the path towards automated and autonomous driving will be exciting. And, uh, and uh, I recommend everybody to try a level two function. Uh, in a BMW, being at an I, a new i7, for instance, great car. And when it comes to level three, just stay tuned. Will be a good thing. It will be a good thing. And BMW is a great brand building great cars. Nicholas, what would you like our listeners to take away with them today? Yes, again, I mean, uh, yes, uh, go and try your BMW. I think it's, uh, it's a great experience indeed. I, you know, you know, autonomous driving is not only about 
autonomous driving it's about enriching technologies that serves many other purposes uh, so indeed it serves the main purpose of mobility uh, but it's and safety and it serves as well uh, other areas as i was just saying so uh, uh, and and uh, and uh, we are grateful to have a partner such as BMW to to help us advancing into this area. Uh, so very much looking forward to continue developing this. Partnerships and collaborations are the, are the future of autonomous driving. Autonomy is exciting because today is tomorrow, tomorrow is today, and the future is collaborations. Nicholas Rene, thank you so much for coming on SAE tomorrow today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for listening to SAE tomorrow today. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to hear more, please kindly rate, review, and let us know what topics you'd like for us to explore next. Be sure to join us next week as we hear from representatives from Here Technologies. On this episode, they'll discuss the impact that intelligent speed assistance technology will have on the driving experience. SAE International makes no representations as to the accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. The information and opinions are for general information only. SAE International does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast.